Alright, so let's have a look at some of the strategies that we can use to integrate the function 1 over the square root of a squared plus x squared. And note that for convenience we often write this as the integral of dx over the square root of a squared plus x squared. So how can we approach this? Now since we have an x squared term and a constant squared term in the denominator, this implies that we would normally look for a trigonometric substitution. And this is the first strategy that we can use. We can certainly use a trigonometric substitution. We can also use another type of substitution and this will form our second strategy and that is a hyperbolic substitution. Okay, so let's explore our first approach. Now with the term the square root of a squared plus x squared it's always a good mental exercise to try and make connections and remember where we've seen this expression before and one of the fundamental mathematical laws that we would have learned in perhaps even primary school is Pythagoras theorem where the square of the longer side is equal to the addition of the square of the two shorter sides and therefore the length of the longer side is the square root of the addition of the squares of the two shorter sides. So if I swap out b for the term x we can say that the square root of a squared plus x squared is just a representation of the longest side of a triangle with a base of a and a height of x. And let's denote the angle between the base and the hypotenuse as theta. Now the ratio of the side x to a we can write that as equal to the tangent of the angle theta and thus we can say that x equals a by tan theta. So now with a squared plus x squared we can write this as a squared plus a squared tan squared theta so substituting a tan theta for x. We can factor out a a squared and say that this is equal to a squared outside of 1 plus tan squared theta. Now this term 1 plus tan squared theta is equal to sec squared theta the secant squared theta. We copy down the a squared term. So we have a squared plus x squared equals a squared sec squared theta. So the square root of a squared plus x squared is equal to the square root of a squared by sec squared theta which is equal to then a by sec theta. So what we have done is simplified the square root of a squared plus x squared into its trigonometric equivalent and since we're making the substitution x equals a tan theta we need to find the equivalent expression for dx and we do that by differentiating the term x equals a tan theta with respect to x which gives us a by sec squared theta d theta so now the integral of dx on the square root of a squared plus x squared becomes the integral of well dx is equal to a by sec squared theta d theta and the square root of a squared plus x squared is equal to a by sec theta. So a and a cancel the squared term and the sec theta on the bottom cancels and so this equates to the integral of sec theta d theta. Now in a previous video we found the result of this integral to be the log of tan theta plus sec theta plus the integration constant c. Now we have our answer in terms of theta but we need to convert this back to in terms of x and a. From our triangle we said that tan theta equals the ratio of x to a so that's simple enough but from here we have a by sec theta is equal to the square root of a squared plus x squared. So if we divide 
both sides by the term A. We have sec theta is equal to the square root of a squared plus x squared on a and we can copy down everything else but now in this log term we can have a common denominator of a so we can write as x plus the square root of a squared plus x squared all over a and of course we have the log of that but you may recall that we can express the log of a fraction as the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. So we can write this as log of x plus the square root of a squared plus x squared minus the log of a plus some integration constant c. Now minus the log of a is a constant because a is a constant and c is a constant so we can replace this with another constant let's call it d so the integral of dx over the square root of a squared plus x squared is equal to the log of x plus the square root of a squared plus x squared Let's now do our second approach where we shall use a hyperbolic substitution. So focusing on the term a squared plus x squared we have the identity cosh u squared so hyperbolic cosine of u all squared minus shine u squared hyperbolic sine of u all squared is equal to 1 and thus cosh squared of u equals 1 plus shine squared of u and if we multiply this whole expression by a squared we get a squared cosh squared u equals a squared plus a squared shine squared u so let's let x equal a by shine u so from the beginning we have a squared plus x squared which we write as a squared plus a squared shine u all squared let's factor out an a squared so we get a squared outside of 1 plus shine squared u this equals cosh squared u a squared can be copied down so we have a squared plus x squared equals a squared cosh squared u and taking the square root of both sides the equivalent on the right hand side would be a cosh u and since we made the substitution x equals a shine u we need to find again the equivalent for dx which is just a derivative of x with respect to u so we have dx equals a shine differentiates to cosh so we have a sh cosh u du so the integral of dx on square root of a squared plus x squared becomes the integral of dx equals a cosh u du divided by the square root of a squared plus x squared is equal to a cosh u the a's cancel out, the cosh u's cancel out as well. So we simply end up with the integral of du, which evaluates to u plus the integration constant c. And since we let x equals a by shine u, this implies that shine u equals x over a. And to get u on its own, we apply the inverse to both sides. So thus u equals the inverse shine of x over a. And this is often written as a r shine x over a. So thus we have the integral of dx over 
root a squared plus x squared equal to r shine of x over a. So as you can see we get a completely different form for the second approach. And for the first approach we had the integral of dx over root a squared plus x squared equals ln of natural log of x plus square root of a squared plus x squared. And not to forget the integration constants here. But this would imply then that the inverse shine of x over a is equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of a squared plus x squared. And indeed it does, but however, this is not enough to prove that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. But we will not go into this proof in this video, but for now if you have found this video to be useful please give me a like and please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more videos that may help you with your homework or assignments. And if you have any questions, please use the comments below. Till next time, best of luck with your studies.